Hey everybody, it's Greg here, back with another video. So uh, what we're doing today is a ice maker. So um, if your ice maker looks anything like this guy, um, I'll pull that head off in a little bit here, but if your ice maker looks anything like that, um, these are usually found in whirlpools, um, KitchenAid Maytag. Um, I believe this is an IC6 part number, I believe. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll take it apart, and, and this one doesn't uh, doesn't actually work. And I, I kind of wanted to find out why, but I, I never really ripped one apart. So let's do that, and uh, we'll figure out what's going on. Okay, so this is the ice maker here. So um, you don't necessarily have to pull it out of your fridge. I just pull it out just for you know ease of actually showing you guys what's going on. So there's usually a screw right there, right here. And then if you have one of these brackets down below, there'll be a screw there holding it in. It's just those three screws. And then you have your um, wiring plug. So you'll have to disconnect that guy. You just push in on the little tabs and pull it out. Um, when you're pulling it out, the tube coming out of your fridge will go right into this guy right here. Um, so make sure when you, I guess, put this back, if you are going to take it out, make sure that tube ends up back in that hole or else the water is going to go everywhere when you try to run a cycle. Okay, so first thing, um, you want to make sure that your freezer is cold enough or else your ice maker is not going to work. Um, so you should be um, about zero degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So that'd be, oh geez, uh, minus 18 degrees Celsius. Um, if it's not that cold, I guess plus or minus maybe about five degrees, but if it's not that cold, it's, it won't make ice. There's a thermostat inside this, this head in here that measures that and it needs to be a certain temperature in order to actually run the motor. Um, next thing you'll want to find out is there's a little shut off arm here. So when you raise that up, it, see how it stays up like that? That shuts the ice maker off. So if you, well the reason why they made that is because your ice bucket fills up with ice and eventually will push that arm up to shut the ice maker off because it doesn't want your you know, freezer to be <laughs> completely full of ice. So make sure this is in the down position, just like that. Um, that's it for, for really easy checks. Um, anything a little more complicated, um, you're gonna have to get into the sky. So we'll uh, pop the head off on this so it just pulls off. Sometimes it can be a bit of a pain, as you can see. <laughs> So you can just take a flat blade screwdriver or a pick or something and just pop this little white cover off. Okay. So what we have now is, this is the, the head of the ice maker. You notice there's a bunch of uh, little holes uh, right here. These are where we're going to be testing there and there. Those are where you're going to be testing um, to check for power and check for resistance, things like that, just to see uh, what the heck's going on. Okay, I just change this around just for a little more ease of showing you guys what's going on here. So I've got my meter set to voltage AC. That's the little sine wave looking symbol. Um, the first thing we actually want to do is check for power to the ice maker head. So um, we're going to check between, okay, there's N up here and L. So I don't know if you guys can even see it very well at all, but L's right here. So we're going to put our meter leads into those guys and check for power. You got to uh, make sure it's in there in there quite a ways because it's, the, the little pieces that you're actually connecting with 
um, are quite a ways inside. So you'll we'll be checking power here. Of course, this guy isn't plugged in, so we're not gonna have any kind of reading or anything, but um, if we have 120 volts here, at least we know that there is power making it to um, the whole assembly. And then we gotta figure out why it's not making ice. So, the next thing that you can do is take that um, little jumper wire. <clears throat> and we're going to put it between H and T. So we're just going to stick that into there, stick the other end into there. And sometimes you have to have the door switch turned off. So if you can push down um, on the door switch, wherever it might be on your fridge, um, just so all the lights go out and then see that this guy turns. So it should start turning once this guy's in. Um, you don't have to leave it in there once. See this, this ice maker's kind of at a funny spot. It's not usually right here when it fails, but um, when this goes about a quarter of the way, so say up to here, so you can just take this out and it'll run on its own. If it stops, just put the, the connector back in and run it a little bit more, say to half or whatever. Um, then you can pull it out and yeah, it should run through all the way up to a fill. So if it, you actually hear the, the water coming in, then it should stop after that and start to cool off the, the water that came in. Okay, so checking between the points T and H, we're gonna be checking for power, so get on voltage here. Um, so if you read um, 120 volts, that means that the, the thermostat is open. Um, if you read zero, that means it is closed. So if it is closed, it should be um, cycling the, the ice maker. Um, if it's not at that point, then, you know, we gotta dig in a little deeper. Okay, so, uh -huh. <clears throat> so yeah, then we'll wanna jump out these points, T and H, and see if this is gonna actually, gonna actually go or not. Okay, so if we test, um, or if we put that jumper in between T and H, and this guy doesn't run, we've made sure that the light switch is off, this arm is in the lowered position, um, and it still doesn't turn at all, then we know that this, this head is, is no good. So basically, in most cases, you gotta change the whole ice maker. Um, in in some, some ice makers, you can actually get um, just pieces of an ice maker, but this guy, um, I think it's just a whole ice maker assembly that you can get. Okay, so I will just give you guys a little bit of better view of this guy. So this N uh, stands for neutral. M is for motor. H is for heater. T is for the, the thermostat connection. Um, L down here, I know it's tough to see, but that's for line voltage. And then we have V over here. This is for um, the water valve connection. So we can test a bunch of other things on here. If we put it on resistance. Okay, so the checks that we can do, uh, just resistance wise anyway, um, we can check between um, L and H. This will check the heater. So, about 72 ohms is, is kind of average of, of what you want for that heater. Um, you can check the, the motor of the ice maker. That one's a lot higher, um, usually about 
eight, nine thousand, something like that. So I'm gonna have to put it on twenty thousand ohm resistance, and we'll check between L and M. So um, you should have, yeah, about about eighty-eight hundred is is usually the resistance value I get. Um, maybe we'll test again once we take this uh, take this ice maker apart. I can show you a little better what uh, what's inside there. So let's start doing that. Um, so I'm just gonna take this head off, just these three screws here. What I should also mention too is there is a little um, adjuster right here. This will adjust um, how much water actually comes into the, the ice maker. So if you find that it is filling and it is running and everything like it should, but the ice cubes just don't seem to be, you know, as big as they used to, or they're kind of hollow or something like that, then you can adjust that up and, uh, yeah, get a little bit more water to come in. Um, half. So turning that screw uh, clockwise decreases the water fill. Um, if you turn it uh, half a turn, that equals about 20 cc's uh, or 1.2 seconds um, of actual activation of the water valve. A uh, full turn is about 40 cc's or 2.4 seconds. Um, the maximum adjustment is one full turn in either direction. So um, yeah, any, any more than that and it could actually damage the, the head here. So full, one full turn from where it sits, one full turn um, either direction is, is as much as you can go. So just so you guys know that. Um, okay, let's take this uh, head apart here. I'll take these screws out and we'll look inside. All right, so we've taken those screws out. Now this should just Slide back. Not sure why that's sticking. Oh, it's the the arm, the the shutoff arm. So what you're gonna do is raise it up all the way, and then kind of wiggle it out. It's got sort of a bendy shape to it, so maybe a little bit of a pain, but. If you're going this far, it's not, uh, you're gonna have to do that because that sits right into that end right there. So I won't let this, this head come off. So there are all the pins that we were, we were testing on. Ooh, and I can, I can smell already um, burnt as soon as I took this cover off. So yeah, something definitely fried up in there. Seventy-one ohms. Sorry, that's yeah, that's the heater. Where it's at? Jeez, seventy-one. So we should be yeah, right around seventy-two. So the heater is good. The heater is usually the biggest faulty part on these guys. I don't know what the heck they, they do with these heaters, but they seem to be the, the part that uh, blows first. All right, so there's an ice maker hand here. So I was just looking inside of here and it looks like, I don't know if you guys could see that or not, but right there, that discoloration, I think that is probably where this guy burned out, and that's actually on the 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 main uh, power line coming in to the ice maker. So that's probably why this guy isn't working so working so well. Anyway, that's what the inside of one of these guys looks like. <clears throat> so this is the actual ice maker motor here. Um, this part is the, you know, the driver that uh, 
the motor turns. This will, will actually run the, um, the arms on this guy. So this will turn these arms around um, and then kick the ice out right about there into the bucket. When it gets back to about there or so, um, it should be refilling. All right. So yeah, that's what uh, I guess it looks like inside um, of an ice maker. So this is just the, the module, the actual head. So like I said, on, on some anchor, ice makers, you can buy just the module and it would come like this. And then you just throw this onto the, onto the ice maker. And uh, that would be all. Some ice makers, you can replace uh, this heater here. That's what this guy is right here. Um, this guy, you, you can't actually change the, the heater. It's part of the mold. Um, some ice makers you can also change um, these fingers because what can happen is if an ice cube happens to kind of get cocked off sideways or something and this guy keeps trying to run down but it can't that motor's still gonna just try to you know make it go down um, eventually it'll just stop because it'll, it'll overheat the motor but what it can do is is bust one of these fingers or it can bend it um, i've seen that too where these uh fingers here can get bent also um like i said some ice makers you can actually change change that piece too some you can change just about everything on this guy but most of them you can't so that's the fill cup right there so the main water comes in through this guy and then there's a little hole. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Oh yeah, right, right down here. That's where the water is going to come in and fill this mold. So when it gets to a certain point, it tells the thermostat that it's it's cold enough. So the thermostat will um, engage the motor. And the, well, actually first it engages the heater. Now the heater heats up just enough to heat up this mold so the ice cubes don't um, stick to the mold. And then it engages the motor. So the motor will come down, sweep those ice cubes out of there and throw them out into the ice bucket. And that is basically the whole everything you possibly want to know uh, about an ice maker. Okay, so another piece that I don't actually have here, but is, I guess, considered part of the ice maker um, whole assembly, is a water valve. Um, so the water valve is going to be on the back of the fridge. If you go down near the bottom, there should be um, a cover that you can take off. Now the compressor will be in there, there'll be a fan in there, and you'll see the, uh, the water valve. It'll have a connector going to it. So what you can do is unplug the fridge, um, undo that connector, and check for resistance through that water valve, and you should have resistance. Um, then you yeah, at least you'll you'll know that your water valve is good um, electrically. It doesn't necessarily mean mechanically it's okay, um, but if your it sounds like your valve is is actuating, you can hear the little buzz for about seven kind of to ten seconds, I guess. Um, if you hear that, but you're still not getting water up to the ice maker check in the tube that uh, will come into into this part here check inside that tube because a lot of uh, a lot of tubes were um, freezing the water inside so you can have a big piece of ice <laughs> stuck in that tube and of course it's not going to want to fill it's going to try to fill and it'll try to send water up, but the water is never going to actually get into the cup here. 
Um, we can also check is some lines on on uh, on fridges run underneath the the fridge, and you can check underneath there, especially when you hear that valve come on, um, and you don't seem to be getting water up to your ice maker. You can check those lines and stuff underneath the fridge, and just make sure none of those are leaking, because I've seen that before too, where those those lines get really uh, brittle and will break as soon as pressure is applied from that from that water valve so you can check that too um, but that that should be just about everything you could possibly check um, on an ice maker most of the time um, with these guys you're going to be um, replacing the the whole ice maker assembly okay so if you guys like this video um, hit that subscribe button because you'll you'll see um, a lot more videos like this one on dryers, washers, just about everything. Um, hit that like button too if you like this video because it's that definitely at least lets me know that you know I'm on the right track um, to well entertaining and uh, teaching you guys what I should be teaching you. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, you have a good day.